Hello, in this video we're going to look at the exponential family and specifically the negative binomial within the exponential family. Now, the only way the negative binomial fits into the exponential family is if we fix R, where R is a, the, a, the given number of successes that we observe before we stop, or it could be the given number of failures before we stop. De you know, it depends how you look about the negative binomial. And this is a follow-up video from uh, the, where we looked at the mean and the variance of an exponential family generically. And so there we looked at these forms. If you can fit the distribution into one of these forms, it's considered an exponential family. But if you can fit it in this form, which is called the canonical form, then it makes finding the mean and the variance or moments in general much easier uh, from this 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 log partition, the a of of eta. Well, let's let's uh, examine the negative binomial. So here it is. Now, where x is the number of trials or or experiments past when you observe the art value. No, I mean past the art observation. So you know if you do this. Uh, experiment r times you could get all r successes and x would be zero but if in one of those you fail and you have to go to r plus one experiments to get the r success then x would be one and so that's what x represents the number of times past the r experiment that you go well now we start manipulating it and here there's no parameter it's only x remember r is fixed so this is only data so this makes it really good for this h of x function here there's sort of a mix between parameter and data and here it's just a parameter but let's let's look at it so we take the e to the log of this piece here and that's what we do here but the log function has some nice properties that you could divide it up with by addition but the um, the exponent can come out front, and so so it's x times log of one minus p, or since multiplication is commutative, log of one minus p x, and then this is plus uh, r log p because the the r comes out front. Now there's no data here, so that kind of makes it nice for the log partition here. Well, and then we're, then that's exactly what it is. So h of x is this. Your uh, eta of p, the parameter, is log of 1 minus p. Your sufficient statistic is x. And the log partition is, you know, minus r log of p. Because it has to be in the, the minus form. Now, to put this in canonical form, you just think about this as just eta, not not log of 1 minus p, just eta, right there. And then times the sufficient statistic. And then this log partition is determined so that we get this back based on eta. And that is if it's minus r log of 1 minus e to the eta. So if you stick in log of 1 minus p here, then the log and the e cancel and you get 1 minus p. Then the 1 minus 1 cancels and you just get p. So it's uh, minus r to the, so we get this back. Okay, so now let's look at the mean of our sufficient statistic. So here, the what the theory says, the mean of our sufficient statistic, in this case it's x, and it's not always x, so that's why I write it like this. In the next few distributions, it's going to be a function of x. But anyway, it says take the uh, derivative with re of, of our log partition with respect to eta. And our log partition was this. Now to take the derivative of a log, the minus r is a constant, so it comes out front. So it's 1 over, and then times the derivative of this, which is uh, e minus e to the eta. So that the minus and minus cancel, and we get this. Now we plug in what we know about eta, and that's the log of 1 minus p. So the, the e and the log cancel, and we just get 1 minus p, e and cancel, and then the 1 minus this, we just get p. Well, this is the mean of a negative binomial. 
Now let's look at the variance. The variance of our sufficient statistic says take the second derivative of eta with respect to our log partition. Or I said that backwards. The second derivative of log partition with respect to eta. And again, this is our log partition. And we already uh, took the derivative once. So let's just put that in and take the derivative of that. And then I like to, and you can just take the derivative. Some of you are so good at derivatives, you just do it. It's the quotient and boom, it comes out. But I like to trick it into, there's only one eta. So you can multiply top and bottom by a, e to the minus eta. And then we get this, I, you know, factor out the r. And then take this up to a minus one. Now take the derivative. So the minus one comes out front. Then you sub, subtract one, then take the derivative of the inside, and we get this. So um, then um, we manip So that is this right here. And then again, this is something an oddity that I like to do is I like to have that a positive exponent. So I take e to the two eta. Top to the top and bottom, and that can be pulled in, and then, then it changes it to a positive. And one of the reasons I do this when we find the mean and variance of odd distribution, sometimes this little trick helps. But now we put in what we know about eta, which is log of 1 minus p, and then that comes to this. This is squared, so the e and the log cancel, we get p, p squared, and this is the variance of a negative binomial. So that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Uh, like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.